Hey guys, I'm out here in the good old Southern Arizona desert today, and boy, have I got a treat for you. I'm gonna be heading up into the mountains, and we're gonna be looking for some old Hohokam runes to check out. And as always, when it comes to exploring runes, leave everything as you found it, so that generations to come can enjoy the beauty and wonder of these special sites. And with that said, let's get ready to head out. This is definitely a good area to be hiking in. A lot of hills and obstacles to overcome, but it sure is beautiful out here, and it's a crazy blue sky. And if you guys have watched my channel for a while, you know I'm not a big fan of blue skies, but it is beautiful out here today. Sometimes when you get to the top of one of those hills, it's best just to step back and enjoy the beautiful view. Oh, isn't that incredible, guys? Well, we're back at it again, and as you can see off in the distance, I'm heading straight for those mountains over there. That's the target objective anyway. They sure are amazing looking from here. And down we go again. A couple more hills to go. As we start to get closer to the ruins, I'm starting to discover some pottery sherds all around. Just check these two out. This one caught my eye. Look at all that huge temper that's been tempered into this clay. Wow. That is some big chunks. I don't even use that big of temper in my pottery. Wow. And this is kind of interesting. Oh, that's a nice big piece. Nothing too wild about that one, but that is beautiful. Really nice and smoothed out. Just beautiful. Well, we're almost up to the ruins, and I'm already right at home here, just examining some of the pottery sherds out here. Oh, these pieces are beautiful. Such inspiration they are for my own pottery, just to see how the masters made these things. And then comes to the imagination, lugging those pots all the way up these hills and mountains. Those pots are not lightweight, and the thicker they are, the heavier they are. So, Wow, I'm always left in awe over the people that lived in these places. Well guys, we finally made it up to the top of these runes. Let's go check them out in further detail. I'm in the first room that I encountered. I'm going to get a better look at the layout of this. It's just a small little room, but this is still pretty cool. Well, here's a good sized room. It sure has a lot of vegetation growing in it, but look at the size of that wall still. Man, got this nice happy tree growing right next to it too. That sure is pretty. Oh man, this is beautiful. Neatly stacked, just incredible. Can only imagine what this may have looked like in its prime. Well, I'm on the far side of this Pueblo now, opposite side of where we first started. And boy, these walls around here. Some of them appear to have collapsed since the last time I was here a few years back, but they still sure look beautiful around here. Let's take a better look at this area. Well, 
Wow, getting a view like this sure paints a whole new perspective on things, doesn't it, guys? How many rooms do you think are in this Pueblo? It sure is amazing. One of the unique things about this particular site is the discovery by archaeologists of some copper bells at this particular location. This definitely shows that even though this is some rugged mountainous terrain that they lived in, there still was quite a bit of trade going on. Oh, this is interesting. Check this out. Oh, this is incredible. How soft that is. This is a yucca plant that's long dead, unfortunately, but uh, you can see these beautiful fibers on it. But they'd actually use this for material to weave with and make sandals out of and all kinds of neat, interesting things. It, well, this is just really soft, this one. And this stuff's actually softer than the yucca brushes I use for my pottery. That is cool. This looks like a small room just a little bit away from the Pueblo. I wonder what it was used for. An interesting thing about the Hohokam is up in these hills, they sure had it rough. Or at least I think they did. I've never once found decorative pottery up here in these hills. It's always been plainware, brownwares, and some smudged redwares. Nothing elaborately fancy, just as simple as it can be. Speaking of pottery sherds, this is an interesting piece that caught my eye. Real thin, real long, but I don't know if you can see. It's got this bump that runs along here. It's very subtle, and I imagine I'm actually holding the base of something rather large. And this could be a pookie line. You can see it's starting to kind of curve itself out. And of course it's been smudged on the inside, so this would have been the inside. I bet that's what that might have been. There's another piece right next to it here. What does this piece tell us? Oh, that it has seen one rough life. Look at that, wow. Nice and smooth on this side, though. Looks like we found some kind of a tool right here, or possibly the remainings of some kind of flint napping. That's pretty cool. It's got some really sharp edges on it, so it may have been used as something. Or it could just be discarded from something else that they were working on. It's an interesting looking piece of pottery right here. Ooh, look at the beautiful mica on this. That is some neat gold mica. This type of stuff is pretty common in this area, this mica, but uh, finding clay is definitely not an easy task out here. So much granite, gravel, and ugh, unpleasant trees out here for any kind of clay. Sure wish I knew where the source of this one was, but I have a feeling that one's locally made. Oh, here we go. Look at this piece. It's got some Gila shoulder action going on it right here. Look at that angle. Isn't that awesome? It's got a lot of mica in it as well. Oh, and just right next to it, this is another, oh wow, a rim piece. These are always incredible finds. You can learn a lot from a rim. Look at that angle on it. It has a steep drop off, nice and flush, real smooth. Looks like this has got some pretty good curvature going on it. Might have been a good size. Wow. Uh, this is cool being a rock hounder, but this piece definitely doesn't look like it belongs here. Kind of hard to tell with this sun that's starting to go down, but look at the translucency on that. That is beautiful. Don't find too many good rocks around here, that's for certain. I don't think this it was originally here. That is beautiful. Oh wow, this is a beautiful piece. Look at the size of it. You don't find too many good sizes up here anymore like this. This must have been part of something really huge. Oh, just look at those mica flashes in there. 
Oh, that is just so beautiful. Nice gold. It's kind of dirty on this side. It's a rough piece, but it's definitely seen its use. Oh, look at those flashes. Just incredible. The views out here are just incredibly spectacular. Oh man, they sure live the good life out here with views like this. Nothing comes quite better, I think. Wow, just incredible. Oh, just check this interesting piece out. Wow, but what makes this so incredible? Look at how thin that is. Wow, that is just wild. That is crazy thin. And then I've got to go and find some crazy pieces like this. Just check this shirt out. Look at the size of the temper in this one. I have no idea how they got it that smooth without creating a bunch of bumps as it dried. Man, that is some neat... Oh, it's really smooth on this side. So the outside, they really spent the time to polish the inside. That's strange. I wonder what this could have been a part of. It definitely had to have been a jar because it warps so much on this side. That's interesting. This might just be all worn out and abraded over the years from erosion. Pretty cool though. Well guys, that sure was a lot of fun and I definitely got my runes and pottery fix in for the day. It sure was amazing to be able to examine those pottery sherds, to look at them, to be able to examine the temper that was used, how smooth they were, how thick they were, definitely a lot of inspiration for me and I'm excited to get back home and to start working on my next pot already. I've got a lot of inspiration here. And then of course there's those beautiful runes that we got to examine. Wow, so many runes, so many interesting things. The imagination can just run wild. I really hope you enjoyed following me along on today's adventure. It sure was amazing. I'm gonna have to plan a more in-depth video on this area. There's a lot of nearby runes that I know of and I'm sure you would love to check those out with me as well. And don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss another episode. I do a lot of primitive pottery and lapidary as well as other adventures. And thanks for helping this channel grow, guys. All right, my friends, till next time.